Welcome to the City of New Bedford's Arts and Culture Show. My name is Lee Heald. I'm the director of the AHA program, which stands for Arts, History, and Architecture. And every second Thursday in the wonderful downtown area of New Bedford, we present a community celebration of arts and culture. We welcome people into our businesses, and we talk about all sorts of events and happening. Each month we have a theme, and the theme for April is the Sustainable South Coast. It happens to be one of my favorite months because it's a great opportunity. We've worked with um, school children, after school programs, university students, nonprofits, and all sorts of people who are going to present the, um, we call it the largest people powered parade on the, um, in New England. It's the Earth Eve Festival, and so it's a great opportunity to come down, welcome spring. We also pre present the Shrink Your Footprint Fair and a variety of activities talking about renewing, reusing, recycling, and just kind of welcoming the energy of spring. So we hope that you're able to join us. In the studio today, I'm going to be talking to Gabrielle Montero, who is the AmeriCorps service member from South Coast Serves, and she's been helping us organize the parade as we work with a lot of UMass Dartmouth students and faculty. We have Mike Kudo um, with the troubadour of the South Coast, Art Tebbets. We'll have Mike Kudo as his guest. And we'll also be taking a little bit of a look back to um, All Sewn Up and some of the wonderful activities that we had for the March AHA night. I do want to thank our sponsors. Um, AHA really functions with the support and help of not only our partners, and we're up to close to 70 partners now, and community members and all of you who come down, but we do have corporate sponsorship. And so April's AHA night is going to be brought to you by um, Bay Coast Bank, they're um, one of our bank on um, AHA members, uh, Veolia Water, um, Domino's Pizza, and we are enormously um, helpful and um, helped by the SEAL, which is the Southeastern Environmental Alliance, and they have really helped us with all of the programming activities. So they, with their partners and the Ledoux Center from UMass, are really bringing to you this wonderful, extraordinary um, a night in downtown. So we do hope that you're able to join us and stay tuned for the guests on the show. Today in the studio we have Gabrielle Montero who is an AmeriCorps service volunteer or an AmeriCorps service member. member. Um, and she works with the South Coast Serves program out of UMass Dartmouth. So, Gabrielle, why don't you tell us a little bit about um, South Coast Serves and their mission? Yeah, sure. So, uh, we're a collaborative out of the Ledoux Center for Civic Engagement at the university. Right. And we foster volunteerism and service to meet the needs of our community. And we serve the whole South Coast region. And so, we really get to accomplish a lot with that. And so what are the ways um, that you actually connect kids with the community? Because I know it happens in a couple of different ways. Yeah, so we have the advantage of, you know, having these, these students that are really excited to, to get their hands, you know, dirty, right. you know, get their, get their feet wet. And so we do a couple different things. We have internships, you know, with students who want to get into their career fields, you know, get the hands-on experience with, in the workplace. Right. We have work-study programs, so that's more of an individual uh, class basis if it, if it pertains to their coursework. Right. And so they get the hands-on experience of what they're learning in the classroom, you know. Um, and then we also have a lot of service projects for students to get a feel for the community, the culture, and get to gain a lot of skills through those projects. So service learning is something <coughs> that the university speaks about a lot, but it's not necessarily a term that most people have mm -hmm. in their conversation. So sometimes, so service learning is a way to kind of do projects in the community, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's a course requirement, sometimes it's a choice. How does that fit in? Well, I mean, service learning is important, and a lot of, a lot of professors and 
you know, at the university realize that, you know, you can learn plenty in the classroom, but until you actually get out there and get the hands-on experience, everyone learns differently, right. you know, and so it's really crucial for students to get that experience in, in the field or even in just something that they enjoy doing, you know, and the, ben and the, the benefits of the community are, the community are great. great. Yeah. So one of the ways that this happens and the reason you're here to talk about April mm -hmm. AHA is that several of the professors have um, traditionally um, connected their students, assigned their students really to work with some after school programs and produce the amazing floats that we have mm -hmm. for the Earth Eve Parade. So uh, tell, can you, because you're kind of organizing the parade, so <laughs> can you s say a little bit more about that? Yeah, so a couple business classes are actually participating this mm -hmm. AHA night with the Earth Eve Parade. And so they were assigned to a couple different after school activities, right. you know, after school programs. And so they get the chance to work with middle school students to create this this float essentially, you know, whether it's a whether it's a large elaborate float or a banner, you know, something that represents how they they all feel about sustainability. Right. And it's really great that college students get to work with middle school students because, you know, middle school students are really taking a lot out of it, <clears throat> as are the college students, you know, they get that opportunity to be mentoring youth. And so marching in the parade really becomes their final project in some yep, ways. Yep, the big presentation, you know, they and they get to show it to the whole community. And we always talk <coughs> about um, the Earth Eve Parade is the largest people-powered parade, we say people-powered, in the South Coast. So you can push it, you can pull it, you can wear it, you can mm -hmm. carry it, and we've had some um, great um, offerings. So, I mean, you've worked with the trustees of reservations, your students, the mm -hmm. um, after-school programs at the Boys and Girls Clubs, the Ys. Mm -hmm. um, I know that we have floats coming from Gifts to Give this year um, in New Bedford. Mm -hmm. um, the Refuse District is doing one, mm -hmm. I think, with your students. And I think we have your students um, working with the New Bedford Public Schools. Yep. And we have some folks coming in from the Art Museum and um, the parade always features the um, New Bedford Middle School marching band mm -hmm. um, and then the, um, <coughs> the steel drum band from um, UMass comes out and leads mm -hmm. us off. So, um, so that's terrific. Mm -hmm. Anything else you need to um, tell us about um, South Coast Serves and what they're doing? Um, well, as far as South Coast Serves, um, how many members do you have? We're almost at about 50 members now, and so we cover quite the large range, and we work with organizations from education to... Social um, services. In, yep, social services, environmental agencies, you know, and so... Um, so even though it's agencies. not the parade, it's a huge... You do Martin Luther King Day and mm -hmm. a variety of farm initiatives, uh, f uh, field to table initiatives with your students. And yep, our it's food, the food to table initiative, we're working on a food justice program at the university and so we just got a student group to begin that and they're officially a student group through the, uni through the university now and in the future I'm planning on uh, connecting them with local farms to help incorporate that into the university's dining services and um, also hopefully set up a food rescue uh, program so what happens with all the food that is left over in the dining right. services right. you know nice. how can we get that to hungry people in the region well we're um, in, uh, we're very impressed with what you've done with your AmeriCorps year and we're very um, we're always pleased to work with the college students and, uh, and that nice combination um, in the community mm -hmm. um, so thanks for coming in and talking to us today and we're looking forward to Earth Eve and all of the amazing floats that these students are going to be uh, showing us. Thank yes, you. Yes, thank you. Hi, I'm Art Tebbets. I'm the host of the weekly open mic at Cafe Arpeggio at 800 Purchase Street in the heart of downtown New Bedford. And for almost nine and a half years now, we've done a regular Thursday night open mic. I never know who's going to be there. It's from 7 to 10. 
folks bring their guitars, they bring their violins, they bring their harps and harmonicas. We have the stage set up for them. They just tell me they want to play. I tell them when it's their turn. They usually get about three songs and they line up. We plug them in, we bring the mics up and they have the sound system all set up for them. And we usually have a real nice crowd. We have the friendliest crowd around, I tell everybody. And we have a good time. And sometimes they're performers who do this for a living. They want to try out some new material. Sometimes it's kids in high school just getting started, their first chance to step in front of an audience. And everything in between. We have a great time. And our Ha Nights, the second Thursday of every month, we have a feature from 6 to 7. And that's terrific. We call it the best of open mic. We take people that have come to our open mic and sung three songs, maybe once or twice or three times, and we invite them to come back and be a feature and play for an hour. So we get to really hear what their sets are like, what kind of musical taste they have, how, what songs that they like and want to share with us. And that's great. And for April, we've got a real treat. I've been looking forward to this one. We have the one and only Michael Kudo. Now, a lot of you know Mike. He's been a teacher at New Bedford for years. He's just retired recently. He's, uh, there are a couple generations of students that remember Mr. Kudo. And uh, he's a wonderful guy. For you music lovers out there, I know you know Michael through Kudo and Mulligan. A beloved duo that's been on the South Coast for 50 years now. Hard to believe. But the two of them can still be seen regularly playing around. And they're always fun. They're always a good time. Two best friends who've been playing together forever. And it's great to see. This time we're getting Michael just by himself. We're going to have Michael come in. And he's going to sing a lot of his original songs. He's going to do some of his favorite covers. He's going to do some songs you may not have heard him do before. It's going to be kind of fun. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a treat. He was supposed to be with us back in February for Valentine's Day, but he had the flu, and the flu wouldn't let go. And it turned out it wasn't the flu, it was pneumonia. So his partner Billy Mulligan came in with his trio and took over and did a great job for us. But Michael's going to finally feeling better. His voice has come back. He's back to playing. He's looking forward to coming and playing at Cafe Arpeggio for our people on April AHA night. He'll be there at 6, 6 to 7, get there early to get good seats. And he's going to do some of those love songs he's written for his new wife, Joanne. She's a sweetheart. We all love her dearly. And uh, she's really inspired him to write some great tunes. He's also written some very funny songs. He has a quirky sense of humor comes out in his music, and I think you're going to enjoy it. And we're going to show you one of these, so I think you're going to like it. He's got a couple different songs. I don't, I'm not sure what, which one we're going to pick out just yet, but I know you're going to enjoy it because Mike's a great guy. And if you would, give a nice listen to Michael Kudo right now, and then come see us on AHA Night in April at 6 o'clock, 6 to 7. And stick around for open mic from 7 to 10. I bet you'll enjoy yourself. People always ask me, why is it that you're a Portuguese fellow who plays in Irish pubs all the time? Well, this is a song that explains it, and it's called A Real Azorian Guy. And for, for the mo most part, it's completely true. It goes like this. Me dad was born Azorian on the Isle of São Miguel. One of ten kids by you on a farmer in the dell. When my boo-boo died, they came here when me dad was only twelve. And he found himself a job for life, working in the mill. And he found himself a job for life, working in the mill. Hardy o hardy o hardy I. He was a real Azorian guy. He worked his fingers to the bone to earn a decent wage. And then came a Talvina, his querida from New Beige. They had two kids they truly loved, Americans they'd be. One was named Carlotta, the other one was me. And one was named Carlotta, and the other one was me. Hardy O, Hardy I, he was a real Azorian guy. They spoke to us in English, though limited, it's true. Sometimes they mixed the words up with the language that they knew. It was a tad confusing, although they knew me well. They call me Michael, sometimes it was Miguel, sometimes they call me Michael, sometimes it was Miguel. Adio, adio, he was a real Azorian guy. They sent us off to Catholic school, gladly paid the fees. It was the sisters of St. Dorothy of the Four River Diocese. They 
had is reading, writing, learning, prayers on our knees. I never understood a word. It was all in Portuguese. I never understood a word. It was all in Portuguese. Adio, adiai. Am I a real Azorian guy? And then I went to high school. And in those days, we would pray. And I fumbled through the morning prayers in English every day. I knew Ava Maria by rote I could review. But translate back to English was more than I could do. And translate back to English was more than I could do. Adio, adiai, am I a real Azorian guy? Then things began to change for me because Then I went to college, took a loan so I could pay And I made a lot of new friends, folk music we would play Most were up from Boston sounding different when they sang Before you know I picked it up, I had an Irish twang Before you know I picked it up, I had an Irish twang Adio, adi-ai, am I a real Azorian guy? We played in pubs throughout the land, me Irish friends and me. It seemed like I was one of them, born in Killarney. We sang so many ditties, me eyes were turning blue. I even gave up kale soup for a bowl of Irish stew. I even gave up kale soup for a bowl of Irish stew. Adio, adi-ai, am I a real Azorian guy? The epilogue of the song goes, for years now I've been singing with my old friend Mulligan. Most audiences think that we are both from Ireland. But he says, top of the morning, it's Prabosh the ninth for me. I have no idea what that means, cause I'm an Irish Portuguese. I have no idea what that means, I'm an Irish Portuguese. Adio, adi-ai, am I a real Azorian guy? March may come in like a lion and go out with a lamb, and today we have the windy part of it. So welcome to March AHA. In back of me, you see a wonderful street that has been yarn bombed, which means people have come in and put textiles up and down the public spaces. It's sort of like a not hurtful graffiti. It will go away after AHA night, but it's a very celebratory piece of downtown right now. They've worked on some of the lamp poles. They've worked on Custom House Square, and they worked on the Whaleman statue um, right in front of the public library. So um, congratulations to all of the area textile artists and to the students from the College of Visual and Performing Arts who put the whole thing together. As part of the All Sewn Up program on March's AHA, we've been working with people in the community who have gotten this great program together. And so it's kind of a community-wide effort to look at textile artists today, um, textile artists in the area, and also to really honor the tradition of textile manufacturing in New Bedford. So it kind of brings back the past, the present, and hopefully the future as we look at the careers of this artist. I have with me Noelle Foy, who Hi, is Lee. the director of the New Bedford Art Museum Artworks in their mm -hmm. newly merged capacity. And so this is one exhibit that you've been planning here. And you are really the mastermind between getting all of these community arts around together around common threads, fibers, textiles. Well, community threads is what we've decided to call this project. Mm -hmm. We had done it a year ago right. on a smaller scale. Um, we had the opportunity to have a fiber show here in the Artworks Gallery a year ago and decided that we would do some other programming with it. So we incorporated a com community public art piece, which is the yarn bombing that's going on. And we've gone out on. and looked at that, right. Um, 
And this year we grew it even more. We invited other galleries to be a part of it. So a number of the galleries here in New Bedford right. all have um, either shows or events that are happening this month that feature uh, fiber and textiles. Uh, the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth is a fabulous partner again this year. Their right. students um, moderated a panel discussion um, on fiber and current contemporary Last artists. weekend when you had sort of a bigger public Absolutely. piece before AHA night. And they have hep helped manage the whole yarn bombing project. And the show that's here at Artworks this month is the Surface Design Association, which is a national organization for fiber artists. It is their Massachusetts, Rhode Island um, chapter's juried show. Nice. Um, Deborah Corsini, who's the curator of the San Jose uh, Museum of uh, Quilts and Textiles, was the juror. She was able to come out for the opening reception. Um, so she's put together a really fabulous show of work here at the gallery. And we've got um, shows up at the Art Museum also. We have work by Ellen Weiske, right. who's a main artist who works in wire but uses textile techniques, and Adrian Sloan, who is another um, regional artist here in, New, uh, in uh, New England who works in fiber. Judith Klein has shows and Gallery X has shows. Um, they're all over the place this month, so great. it's really great. It's a great way for the community to come together, and it's a very important topic for New Bedford to think about in yes. its past yes. and how it moves forward. And with the university here, um, they have a very large textile and fiber right. department, so it's very relevant for their students and um, the community here, too. Well, thank you for all your good work and for your um, brainstorm inspiration and um, probably perspiration as it came along <laughs> in terms of getting all the work done. We, um, the community really needs people like you who step up and do this for us, so oh, that's great. Well, it's my pleasure. It's been a lot of fun. I enjoy it immensely. Good, thanks. Thanks, Lee. We're here at Gallery 65 and I'm talking to Peter Michael Martin and you were one of the institutions that worked on this kind of all-town fiber art projects and so your exhibition is this brilliant kind of crossover between art, fiber, printing. <coughs> Tell us a little bit about it's it. It's an exhibit uh, called Pocket Full of Posies. It's all hand done illustrations. I believe there are 51 pages. A book published by Holt Mifflin okay. titled Pocket Full of Posies. By? Sally Maver who's nice. from Falmouth and uh, she's someone who uh, one of our members, Nicole, ran into in the fiber arts and talked about the possibility of having her exhibit her work which was just shown at the Cape Cod Museum of Art in Dennis. Nice. So it finished its completion there and uh, then we installed it here. So we have 20, 28 of the 51 pieces of the book and I think the other 23 are either sold or in held by the artist herself. I heard it was enormously popular it, this I, past weekend during the Fiber Arts weekend. I believe, I think since it was a, co a collaboration mm -hmm. with Prole's Artworks and New Bedford Art Museum, it really, and, and Gallery web, 65, and Gallery, and Gallery 65, X, all of them. They were, and the weather was really Good. very cooperative Perfect. with yeah. us. The downtown was really quite active and we had um, an outstanding attendance and I believe just from the way it looked out the window, and I did make a couple of the other events that were very well attended. Well, and people love this, though. This was yes. the kind of keystone that everybody was talking about as I went around. Well, so. we've had a number of people still coming in up, you know, after the exhibit. And how long is it open? Till the end of March, the 29th, Sally will be here for an afternoon uh, reception and a lecture. Nice. Great. So. Well, thank you. We're going to look around a little bit. Great. Thanks for coming. We're here at the Roachstone Stuff House and we have Tony Sapienza with us who is the president and CEO. President of Joseph Buda Apparel. There you go. And so you're going to be speaking a little bit tonight about the textile industry. We've sort of thought about tonight as being about sort of the history of the textile industry, the present and the future in terms of the arts. And you're really speaking about... I'm really talking about apparel and textiles and how the apparel industry came out of textiles and okay. how we are still have a some apparel manufacturing going on in the city and how and why that's been able to, to sustain itself. And so, so what's the difference between like a textile mill and an apparel well, mill? Well, a textile mill is where we weave cloth and okay. an apparel mill is where we take the cloth and 
make it into Clothes. suits and sweaters and jackets and pants. So you're not really weaving. You, We're not no weaving. There's no weaving going on in New Bedford from okay. a, from a, for commercial purposes. Right. There's artistic weaving right. going on certainly at the at uh, Star, uh, Store Star Store and, and, and at Alley Galleries and Hatch Street and, yeah. and yeah. stuff like that. Very interesting textile artists who, you know, are living off of the tradition in this community of, of textile art and certainly the strength and the history at, at uh, UMass and what is now you know, UMass Dartmouth, but uh, those programs were started so off as started out, started out as Southeastern Mass and as the textile, you know, uh, textile college. And so Joseph Abood is one of the last One of the last, remaining. one of the last. And, and 20 years ago there were probably uh, five, six, seven thousand text, uh, excuse me, apparel workers. workers. Prior to that, there was a whole women's um, um, sewing industry in, in uh, New Bedford and in Fall River as well. And the, the women's industry was the first to leave. They went offshore much quicker because the kind of products that were being made were less expensive, so it was easier to move that product. And the, right. the cost of labor offshore was certainly more, um, more attractive to those businesses. But the men's industry followed. We had great factories here at Cliftex, uh, Shepard Justin. I mean, Cliftex in its day made 8,000 suits a day. I mean, that's a lot of suits. It is, and you know, uh, we brought people up to Joseph Abood with a Teachers Institute, so yes. you helped talk to some New Bedford High School teachers. Yes. And what amazed me is that it's this interesting combination of real technicians and uh, apparel workers who are really experts in their field, but old-fashioned seamstress that's kind right. of, yeah. with computerized. Everybody yeah. is computerized. And lots of computers, lots of automated sewing where we right. can because you can be that much more productive, particularly in those jobs where that fine hand is not quite as important and uh, uh, you know we don't make anything by hand anymore but we sew it by machine but it's, but an it's interesting still combination. But it's a still very important yeah I mean today it's you know a skilled industry. it's a still skilled industry whether it's skilled because you understand the computerized part or the automated part and how you manage those machines right. and or the still the old world skills of, right. of being able to tailor a garment right. Well, thank you for coming to AHA, and um, we hope that Joseph Booth stays in New Bedford for a long time We have every intention come. of doing that. Yeah. We have, uh, we've had a very successful spring. We've actually more than 600 employees today. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Up from 510 this past, uh, past summer. So well, thank you for your contributions to New Bedford, okay. and keep pleasure. up the good work, I guess. We hope that we're able to see you downtown on April 10th for April's AHA night. We need all of the people we can get along the parade route to cheer these kids on. They've done such a fantastic job with their floats and their thoughtfulness about ways to keep the South Coast sustainable. For the month of May, we have City Views. It's the month we look at buildings, preservation, architecture, and just different ways that the city is coming alive. We also feature end of the year shows from the university as well as the all New Bedford public school art show at the Roderick Center. So that's something to think about, put on your calendar, and anytime you can join us, we are delighted to welcome you to the downtown environment. I've been singing songs for oh so long Well, since 1963 You'd think that I'd be burned out sick and tired Of all that harmony And I must admit that for just a bit I needed some respite But when most retire I found that friend of fire Begin to reignite All of this is gravy And I can't get enough Lots of kisses from my baby Blue skies up above Every day is a bonus To flourish and survive And every morning when I wake I thank the Lord I'm alive My life expectancy has passed the guarantee 
of 69.5 Yet here you see I stand at 70 Coming to you live And melodies are tumbling out of me Though I'm old and gray You'd think that I'm way past my prime But this is all I have to say All of this is gravy And I can't get enough Lots of kisses from my baby Blue skies up above 